Hey guys, welcome back. So now we have built all our endpoints. We have tested them out in Postman. Now what we are going to be doing is we are going to go ahead and add documentation for our API. Because yes, we have built an API, we have built our backend code, but right now it's only us that understands which endpoints are, are on our server and how they can be accessed. So we need a way to tell other people about how our API is what our API is and how it is structured and how it is it should be accessed, what parameters, what URLs we can expect. And we are going to be doing that by describing it using Swagger. So Swagger is just a set of tools that can help us to describe and document our API in a standard way. And that means that anyone who understands the open API spec or the Swagger spec can quickly understand what can quickly read and understand what our API does. Now, I'm here on the Swagger IO specification. Now, I just scroll down to the things you need to do to describe your API. So we need a way to define like what our API is, who is it for. If you have some terms of use, we can list those ones there. So we'll have to create something like this. So we can also define like a contact object. We should also have, have these uh, compulsory or optional fields like name, URL, and the email. So there's a license. We have the server object, so we can define like a base URL for our server. So yeah, if you have multiple servers, we would specify something like this. So I'm going to scroll down just so we can take a look at what else is available. So we also have the components objects. This is mostly the things you're going to be describing. So how responses should look, how requests should look, how requests should look, how, how the headers should be. What query parameter, what query params should be there, those kinds of things. So all this stuff, we are going to we are going to need to create a document for all these kinds of things. Now you notice that it's quite a lot here. So to be able to make a documentation for a Flask app, we have different utilities that we can use. Now depending on how you build your app, some of these tools can be able to automatically pick up a documentation. But the way we are building our app, we are basically following a simple a simple structure we are not using like serializers to handle our responses so we're going to need to do some extra setup notice that when you're using first restful your documentation might not look the same as we are going to work to implement ours but later i'm going to be creating an api using first restful which is like an abstraction layer and makes things more easy and marshmallow that these make things more easy to work with so right now for us to get started documenting our own because either way we need to we need a way to, to tell the the whole world what our api is and how it can be accessed we are going to be installing this flask and we are going to be manually documenting our api so first thing we're going to need to do is to install it so i'm going to go to the installation block so we need to install flask like this setup tools we already have it so here i'm going to stop the server then we can install Flaskga. Flaskga. Okay. They were so innovative on the name. So once we install Flaskga, we need to configure a few things. Now here in our now here in our config, I'm going to create a file called swagger.py. So I'm going to bring in this here and then we can go over it. So with Flaskga, we need to define a template. Now you notice that these are the things we are seeing in the API spec. These are the things you are seeing here in uh, the specification. So here we need to define a template where we can specify the info about our API. So this is going to be standard. You don't really have to memorize all this. You just need to know what they mean. So we're going to define a base path. So we don't want to be saying, it. so we don't want to be our server API v1 on every call. So we can define a base path and then all the other URLs, will, all the URLs can be relative to this. So we also specify that we can accept HTTP or HTTPS. So this part here is really important. So for the security definitions, there we define that our API uses the bearer type of authentication. And whenever a user and whenever a user is making requests, the bearer authentication with the type of the API key. And then we specify that whenever a user is making a request, we need them to send us the authorization in a header. And the, and the authorization, of course, is going to be the bearer type and should be the JWT token. Okay, so once we define this outside the template down here, I'm going to bring in another config. 
So for this config, we basically define like the we, we basically define the initial headers. Now for the specs, the API that we generate here should be compatible with other documentation tools. So we specify a route that we can use to get a JSON version of our documentation, which we can move onto any other tool that understands Open API or Swagger, and it should be able to work just fine. So then we define a static path. So this static path here is basically used to generate the CSS to show on our documentation. So don't mind much about that. So we also define that we want to be using Swagger UI. So basically Swagger UI just lets us visualize things in a good way. And we specify the default route, which is going to be at the home page. So now from now, every time we go to the home page, we should expect to see a documentation. We need to configure this directly with our app, just so our app can now understand it. So what we need to do is, so what we need to do is in our Danda init. So for Danda init, you're gonna go here and import a few things from Flasga. So we can do from Flasga, import, not int. So we're gonna, so we're gonna import Swagger itself. We're also gonna import Swag from. So swag from enables us to create a YAML file where we can describe our spec. So once we import this, we need to go in, uh, in our config. So over here, we can also pass a swagger config. So swagger, and then inside here, we can specify the title. So the title can be bookmarks API. And then we're gonna specify the UI version. So the UI, so swagger UIs have evolved. Now we can choose the one we want to use. I'm gonna choose three, which is the current at the moment. So I specify UI version like that. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and from our config, import our swagger config. So from source.config.swagger, import, we need the template, and also the other swagger config we defined. So now, down here, before we return the app, so I'm gonna go here, so right here, we can go ahead and configure Swagger. So we're gonna do Swagger, and then we give it the app. So our app is app. Then the next thing we're gonna give it is our config. So for the config, we'll just do config equals Swagger config. And then we can pass the template. So we can do template equals the template we defined in our, in our config. So once we have this, our setup will be done. Now to start documenting. So we're gonna start by documenting this short URL. Now to document this, what we want is we want to use the at swag document at swag from decorator. So we can do at swag from and then we can specify the spec. So in our case, we will need to specify the path to where our YAML file definition will be. So here we are going to so here in our I'm going to call I'm going to call I'm going to create a file called docs and then inside docs I'm going to have so I'm going to have each blueprint and then inside we are going to be putting the documentation. So let me have auth here, and let's start with login.yaml. So let's also create the one for bookmarks. So I'm gonna do bookmarks. Now there are some endpoints that are not really in our apps, for example, this one. So for this one, what you can do is just in the root, you can create a short URL.yaml, since we are in the docs folder should be able to work fine. And then inside here, we can first define what, what it does. So you can say redirects to, so now here, this is a YAML format. So be sure to make sure you're, you're consistent. So I want to define the tags that this should have. Now the tags are useful if you want to group the URLs in the documentation, as you will see. So we can also specify parameters, so parameters. So for the parameters, we can say, okay, for someone to come here, we want to first make sure that we want to first make sure that in the path, we have the short URL and then we must specify, we can specify that this will be required. So we can do required true. And with YAML, true is not like a Python true. We use the true like this. So also we can define like the responses just so we can tell the people what they can expect. So we can do responses and then we can say that, okay, when we get a 302, then that means then we can describe it, so we can do description. And guys, everything here is uh, everything here is down here, but I'm just showing you like a standard way you might do it. So you can see like here, description, and all this stuff. So for the description, then we can say something like redirects permanently. Also, we can return a 404. 
and this can be thrown when the record was not found or when the tag or that short URL was not found when that short URL was not found in our DP. Okay, so this looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and save this file here and then we run back our Flask app. So we'll do Flask run. So we need to change our we need to change our config to use development again. So I'm gonna go to our first game and change this one to development. Stop our server, run it again. So we need to specify the swag here. Now here we're gonna provide a path. So we're gonna do dot slash docs slash short URL dot yaml just to make sure we, we have a varied path. And now if you come back here and refresh still failing let's take a look at why the way we are defining our responses we need to make sure that this is behind so we have responses oh we need to have this here yeah so you want to make sure your yaml is formatted properly okay so now we just need to make sure that our things are correct so we have this simple description we have the tags we have this we have our responses we have our responses which should look good so i'm gonna go back to the server and now you can see that it loads without an error and yeah and we have the, the and we have the the documentation for the slash short url route and we have even a way to try it so the authorize button is, is when we specify that we are using the bearer token in the swagger config now what i want to do here is instead of me going and doing things scratch these yaml files are prone to me making errors so I'm gonna show you how you can add like the one for login. So just a sec, I'm gonna bring it in. So to make like the one for login, the one that makes a post request, I'm going to bring in this. And then over here, you can see that we start, we have a simple description. Then we have the tags. So the tags are used to group these endpoints inside like this. So you can see that the short URL is grouped under bookmarks. So you can see that now we define the parameters. Then for the name, we say okay in the body. We expect some things, so we require a username and a password, and then we give an example of how it should look, and uh, we can show some example responses. Now, you just need to make sure that your 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 YAML file is formatted properly, and these keys are the ones that we should expect. So now, to add this to our route, we can go to our auth, and then where we have login. So here we have login, we can have swag from, so let's import swag from from classic so from trustga so where we have the login we can have swag from we can have add swag from and then we define the path so our path here is gonna be docs slash auth slash login dot yaml so let's save that and now if we come back here and refresh you can see that we have the authentication added and because of the tags, the, it is grouped, the URLs are grouped alone. But if I went ahead to, let's say here in, a, so let's say here in the login, if I went ahead and change this one to bookmarks and saved and refreshed here, you're going to see that now everything is under bookmarks. So that's what tags are. They basically allow you to separate and group related endpoints together. So let me also bring in the registration. It should be quite similar to the login. So here, I'm going to have register.yaml. So it can be yaml like this or yaml like this. So now it should be the same thing, just that here we expect three things and they are all required. We have an example in there and the example responses. So let's save that. Now we need to, of course, add it to, to we need to add the swag from the curator. So I'm gonna copy this and uh, here, you can also have it. And this should be register.yaml. And uh, if we come over here and refresh, you can see that register is also added. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to add some few ones for the bookmarks. Then I'm going to leave you guys to add the other ones because the format, now you guys have the format. So I'm going to go ahead and add one that can allow us to get the stats. I'm going to create a folder called stats, a file called stats, demo, like this. And then it's going to be bookmark stats. We expect the user to be authenticated. So we say, okay, the authorization header is required. And these are the sample responses. 
So you can either send back this or the bookmarks themselves. So now, if you go to our app, if you go to our, our bookmarks, we can have swag from, which should import here. We need to be able to go to, to our stats and also add the swag from. So here we can have at swag from, we define the path, docs, bookmarks, stats. And if we save this, so if we take a look here, you can see that it, it is tagged under bookmarks. And also let's make it YAML, just so we have all our files are consistent. So let's rename it here, YAML. Let's save here. Let's try again. Now you can see that it is added, it's added here, and things are good. Whenever we define a documentation like this, it's going to have a spec. Now, like we said, now we are basing on the open API spec. Sometimes it's called the swag as spec. So this is one that can be understood by even other documentation tools. Now, if you look here, we have the API spec.json. So with this, we can be able to export this documentation into other tools. So I'm gonna to go to Postman here. And with Postman, you see you can have, in the file, you can have the import option. So with the import, you can import this documentation using our link. So we need to go to slash API spec with JSON, but with that is just a relative to our domain. So we are going to go to our app and then enter the spec URL, and then we can click continue. And then it's gonna detect that, oh, this is a valid documentation. Then we can import it in as a documentation. I'm gonna click okay. And when I do that, we'll get an API and a correction imported. Then I'm gonna close here. And when this refreshes, you can see that now we have the bookmarks API and yeah, so down here, if we click on this, we should be able to see the documentation. So the more we add more docs, more, more endpoints on here, the more we can get more when we export. So for the collection, if I click on correction, we have this new bookmarks, we have this new bookmarks API, and this can be used to, to test out APIs really fast. So that is the basics of how we can document our simple API. Now I'm looking forward to creating more tutorials that will use that will use Flask RESTful, and we're gonna be seeing how we can work with Flask RESTful and the API documentation. So if this video helps you, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one where we are gonna be. I will remember something I wanted to share. Yeah where we're going to be deploying this application to a live server. So thanks guys for watching. Talk soon.